Hello, and welcome to the 411 Show. My name is Laura, and I'm 16 years old. This show is run by youth, hosted by youth, and aimed to inform youth. We will give our perspective as true as we know it. We will also be showcasing some video shorts. Today's guest is... Hi, I'm Annalisa, and I'm 13 years old. And I'm Victoria, and I'm 13 years old. For today's show, we'll be discussing Supreme Court cases that have involved youth. Today's show is part two. Many of us have heard of landmark Supreme Court cases. They are called landmark cases because they set a standard by which other cases are judged. But did you know that there have been many important Supreme Court cases that have involved school-aged children and teenagers? Many young people today don't really pay much attention to Supreme Court cases unless they happen to discuss it at school. But the Supreme Court has a tremendous influence on our lives and many times decides what can and cannot be done at our schools and even within our own families. We will discuss some of the famous cases that have involved youth and discuss the pros and cons of the issues the court had to decide. So the next time you hear that there's a Supreme Court decision coming down, pay attention, it may concern you. Now let's begin. The next case we will discuss is Tinker versus Des Moines School District. This case was in 1968, during the Vietnam War. For four years, the United States had been engulfed in the Vietnam War and had split the nation in two. This case concerned the freedom of speech clause in the First Amendment and questioned the authority of the school officials to censor symbolic speech in classrooms. Five students in 1965 decided that they would wear small black armbands to express mourning for the dead in Vietnam on both sides of the conflict and to express support for Senator Robert Kennedy for a proposal to make an indefinite truce that had been proposed over the Christmas holidays. Two of the students, Christopher Eckert and John Tinker, who were in high school, and Mary Beth Tinker, who was in eighth grade, were suspended from school. The school district held that the armbands would cause a disturbance at the school and interrupt learning. The students did not cause a disruption or make any kind of speech at the school against war. They simply wore the armbands. Before we discuss what the decision of the Supreme Court was in this case, let's discuss the issue a little bit. Do you think that the school district in this case was overreacting to the students wearing the black armbands, or do you think that they had a good reason to ban them? I think they were overreacting because the armbands did no harm, did not offend anybody, did not get anything mad, anybody mad. They just were wearing them to express how they feel. I do think that the school was overreacting um, because it's just an armband and it really wasn't offending anybody and the, they did have good reason to wear the armband and I'm not saying that they, every school should allow that every student should have an armband just when it's, if it's temporary and not all the time. So what do you think? Should students have the right to express themselves with symbols at school, such as shirts, armbands, or buttons, or should there be limits on that? Um, I think there should be limits on that, but most of all, yes, as long as they're not inappropriate or offending to anybody. Um, I do believe that students should be able to wear a different clothing with slogans on it, as long as it's school, inappro or school appropriate. <laughs> Um, if it's not offensive to any other students. Do you find this happening at your school? That is, students wearing slogans on their shirts or jackets or buttons to express their views on the war and other issues? <clears throat> yes, I do. Like, people wear buttons or ribbons that say certain slogans, but I don't, like, the teachers won't let them wear anything that's not inappropriate. Yes, I do find this happening. Do you think that the wearing of buttons or shirts with slogans can be disrupted at school? Or do you think, can you think of any cases? Um, yes, it could be disruptive in school if it's like gang related or like offensive or racist or anything huh. to anybody. Um, I remember this one time, um, one of the girls at school kept saying that she was an antichrist and so like at my school everybody's Catholic and or Christian and so everybody went up to her and since she was being disruptive about it everybody went up to her and they started threatening her and actually she got beat up for it so 
when you do something like that, as long as it doesn't offend other people. Well, many people at my school, they really don't wear buttons, but they do wear clothing, and such as brand names as Hollister and Abercrombie. So it really is not as offensive, but as you go through the day, you see many people wearing these brand names and uh, other people wearing regular um, clothing. So. So it could it be disturb. It could be a disturbing um, feature, but for the people that do wear like the brand names, there you don't really have a problem with it because they um, it, most people wear it. Mary Beth Tinker won the right to wear her black armband in a seven to two decision. Seven judges for two against. The decision read, neither students nor teachers shed their constitutional rights to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. And public schools may not be enclaves of totalitarianism, which is like dictating. The fear or apprehension of disturbance cannot overcome the First Amendment. The court acknowledged that the speech on controversial issues may cause an argument or disturbance, but stated our Constitution says that we must take the risk. So do you think this was a good decision on this case, and why? Yes, because the arm brands weren't disruptive, or nobody had a problem with them. Just the teachers, which wasn't really, you know, anything to have a problem with. So yes, I think they made a good decision on the case. I think, yes, that they did make a good decision, um, although many students may have gone up to them asking them why are they wearing the armbands, but they weren't as disruptive as many people think they might have been. Well, that concludes our show for today, and thank you for turning in to the 411 show. Let us know if you would like to be a guest or performer on the show. Check out our website at 411show.blogspot.com, MySpace and YouTube. And remember, it's always good to get the 411.